This conference will now be recorded. You're all set. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law, I wish to state that on April the 23rd, 2021, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, the Upper Township website, and the Town Hall foyer, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel, Letter, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being audio recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that the announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. And I would ask all to rise. Uh, let's see, where's Barbara Young? <coughs> oh, Barbara Young, you see her? She's got a little flag there. We'll do the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag. flag. To the flag. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, nation under God, God, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Barbara, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Coggins? Here. Mr. Corson? Present. Ms. Hayes? Here. Mayor Palumbo? Here. The members are present. But someone like to approve the minutes from April 12th, both the regular and closed session uh, minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Is there any corrections, deletions, omissions that anyone's aware of? No. Okay. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Four. Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Corson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? All right. Let's go through the report. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll forego the reports. We have Leon Costello on, on the call. So, um, Leon, um, do you want to direct us? Yeah. I know we're going to have a public hearing for the uh, ordinance. Um, and then authorizing the reading of the 2021 municipal budget by title only and 2021 budget public hearing. So um, you want to lead us where we need to go? Yes. And the reason for tonight's agenda, which is a little unusual, is because we have this dilemma of all this money that the states, uh, counties, and local governments are going to get. The DCA has not approved how it's to be inserted in your budget and what's to be used for. Um, I've requested that everybody not adopt their budgets until we find out what the rules are. So tonight we'll have the, like you said, the uh, reading, second reading on the ordinance for the COLA ordinance, which is really just a, a formality. Um, authorizing the title, the budget be read by title only, which is also a formality. And then if there is any public questions, we'll, we'll field the public questions. And then we're gonna hold, we're gonna wait and see what the rules are. Hopefully we know before May 10th, I think is your next meeting, before May 10th, we can adopt then. Uh, we have not changed the budget at all since introduction and we're planning to proceed uh, with this budget and make modifications as we're allowed to once we find out what the stimulus rules are. You stand to get about $1.2 million, which will be paid 600,000 this year and 600,000 next year. So we certainly want to make use of that money if we can, and that's why we're holding it up tonight. So you can proceed with item number one, the public hearing on the uh, ordinance for the COLA ordinance. Okay. And we'll keep on um, going. Before I open it up um, to the to the public um, for uh, hearing on the uh, adopt, well, hearing on ordinance 8 2021, um, John, do you have anything to add or anyone else for that matter? Uh, no, not at this time, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, Mr. Costello has, uh, has covered everything quite adequately. At this point, there's no point in approving uh, the budget or voting on the adoption of the budget tonight as long as we have another little opportunity to find out what the state will allow us to do with these pending funds. Uh, that would make it a lot easier to roll it into our budget. Okay. So with that, 
Um, I will open it up to the public uh, to see if anyone would like to address the township uh, committee with regards uh, to ordinance 2021, calendar year 2021. Um, and I would ask that you uh, state your name and your address and the the part of the budget that you'd like to address. So this is just this is just for the yeah. ordinance, not the budget. Just for the ordinance. Okay. 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 So this is just on ordinance eight, 2021, and perhaps we should clarify. This has got to do with the authority to exceed exceed the municipal budget cap, really to okay. create a bank. Leon, if you want anything to yeah. add, feel free. No, and and we're not exceeding anything. We're just using the banking provision. So it's only on the ordinance. We'll get to the bu budget hearing. Okay, okay. public hearing to three. Okay, got it. So would anyone like to address the town, township committee? Everybody Everybody's unmuted? been unmuted. Yes, everybody's unmuted, Mayor. Okay. Danny, are you comfortable that there doesn't appear to be any public comment? Yes, and Paul, you haven't noticed anyone attempting to uh, raise their hand or anything, have you? No, no, there's no uh, no indication. You can close it to the public, Mayor. Okay, at this time, I'll close uh, the public hearing, and I guess we will entertain a motion for final adoption. We, are we going to do a final adoption for this one? Yes. This is fine. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make like a motion to... I'd like to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 008-2021 for the calendar year 2021 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank. Okay, second. is there a second? I'll second. Um, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Person? <clears throat> yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Now, this I next resolution is only uh, allowing the budget to be read by title only so that Barbara has to, has to read 100 pages worth of information. That's all this resolution does. I appreciate the resolution. Authorize. Second. Bar? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Person? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Now, Mayor, it's time for the public hearing on the budget. Okay. So again, I'll, I'll reiterate, if you would like to address the Township Committee uh, regarding the, the budget, now's the time to do so. Please state your name, your address, uh, and the item that you'd like to address or question with the Township Committee. It's the same budget that we introduced. Everybody's unmuted, Mayor. Okay. A little bit of feedback is there's one of the callers has a TV on in the background, so that's what you hear in the background feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor, I would ask you again just to make sure that no one has any comments. Again, folks, um, I realize this is a little um, difficult at times, but you're all unmuted. If you'd like to address the Township Committee regarding the, the budget, um, now's the time to do so. Um, Paul will monitor um, who would like to speak. Danny, are you comfortable? It doesn't appear to be any comment. Yes. Okay. So at this time, I'll close. Let the record reflect there was no public comment. And at this time, I'm I'll sorry. Close. I'm going to step in. Go ahead. 
Hello? Yes. I'm sorry. My name is Suzanne Adams. I was not sure when I should speak. Um, I have a few neighbors on with us as well. We reside at 7 St. Andrews Place in Marmora. Um, some issues that we've been having here on the block. We are across from this uh, primary and secondary Wait, school. Oh, Suzanne, and, um, hold, the, the speeding Suzanne. up and down the street. Suzanne, hold on a second. This is only in regards to the budget. We'll have a public portion of the meeting toward, at, towards the end of the meeting. This is just only to address the budget. Do I you have any? It. Thank you. Okay. No. Okay. So, um, I don't believe there's any other folks that want to address the township committee with respect to the budget. Are you comfortable? Now make the most. Go ahead, uh, Leon. Did you? Yeah, I was going to say, now make a motion to close the public hearing and table the adoption of the budget until uh, at least the following meeting. Okay, so, so move the stated. So uh, I would like to say, though, let the record reflect there was no public comment. Well, go ahead, John. Uh, so moved as stated by Mr. Costello. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So so we're, this is a motion to close the public hearing. So would you call the roll? Well, just yeah. to be clear, uh, motion to the close motion the hearing. Is to to close the public ahead, hearing public. and to uh, table the adoption of the budget until May 10th. Correct, Leon? Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mr. Barr? Yes. Coggins? Yes. Orson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried with all in favor. So as soon as I know something, I'll get back to you on what the rules are going to be with this money that we were supposed to get. Um, and hopefully on May 10th, we'll get this thing finalized. And, and have probably, thank you. probably so have 15 of these thank on hold you. right now. Yeah. Thank you. Just for the thank public education. Anyone interested in the budget? This this hearing is continued until May 10th. They can appear at that meeting and express any uh, concerns or questions that they have. No further notice. Correct, Leon? Yes. Yep. No further notice. Correct. Okay. Leon, thank you for your help. I'm sure you would. Uh, you're, 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 you're welcome to stay on the call, but I'm sure you got a lot going <laughs> on. So. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night Leon. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Leon. Thanks, Leon. Okay. So at this time, we'll get some reports. Um, Scott, do you have something for us this evening? Yes. Good evening, Mayor, committee members. Uh, start with the uh, KMA County Department of Health report. Uh, for today, April 26, 2021. Um, for any vaccination information on where, when, who, and how um, to get a shot, uh, you can easily go to Cape May County, nj.gov, uh, or also visit our Upper Township uh, site at uppertownship.com. Uh, the New Jersey Health Department uh, reports that uh, 47,426 Cape May County residents have received um, at least one vaccine dose and 37,384 have been fully vaccinated. Uh, Cape May County continues and has continuously led the state uh, in per capita administration of the COVID vaccine. Um, new COVID protocols will be put into place uh, in New Jersey beginning on May 10th uh, for certain indoor events. Uh, Governor Phil Murphy announced that uh, indoor room capacities will increase to 50% with a maximum of 250 individuals for private catering events, uh, which includes weddings and school proms, political events, funerals, memorial services, and performances. Uh, and dance floors uh, will be allowed to open and uh, private catered events uh, with masking and social distancing requirements uh, will also be required to be in place. Um, there's also a uh, um, increase as far as gatherings and con are concerned for uh, uh, outside events, and that increases to 500 um, participants. Um, and uh, this evening, that, that is all I have for you, Mayor. Okay. 
Uh, let's see, uh, Barbara Young, do you have anything for us this evening? I just have one quick little announcement. Um, next Thursday, next week, May 6th at 10 a.m., we will have a virtual um, national day of prayer. Um, and you can log on to the Upper Township website uh, for the information on how to uh, log on or call in for the virtual day of prayer ceremony. That's at 10 a.m. on May 6th. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dan, do you have anything for us? Yes. Um, I'd like to report that we received correspondence uh, in the last two weeks from the Federal Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. Uh, they're requesting whether Upper Township wants to be uh, a consultant party in their review uh, and study of the Worstead Ocean Wind permitting process. Uh, among other items, they, they address environmental effects and any adverse effects on the proposal or from the proposal. Uh, as you, the committee knows, we, we had uh, a, a subcommittee of the full committee uh, to address BL England concerns, obviously with the uh, decommissioning of the plant and, uh, and also the uh, uh, request by Ocean and Wind and Worcester. Um, that committee has been uh, the mayor um, and uh, John Coggins. So I, I would suggest that you do become a consulting party, you notify uh, the, the Bureau that you will be a consulting party because you'll be uh, asked to participate at a higher level and get more information uh, and more input. Uh, and I also suggest that we have a committee uh, that deals with that in between the meetings. I would like a motion, I guess, to that effect or whatever you guys uh, would like to do. So your suggestion is that John and I um, go to these meetings well, number one, that we become a consulting party as they request uh, or invited us. Um, and number two, that we set up a subcommittee because obviously things can come up in between uh, our committee meetings that may need to be addressed or reviewed or a direction needs to be given. Obviously, any formal action of the township would have to come from the full committee. And up, it's up to the committee who you want to be on the subcommittee. That's your call. I was just giving a history. I mean, um, if someone else would like to to participate, um, I'd certainly be willing to step down. I mean, I have been involved, but I realize that uh, you know this is a, this could be planning for the future of Upper, and uh, you know if someone else would like to partake, uh, I'm okay with that. I'd be interested in doing that, Rich. Okay. Anybody else? Well, John, are you staying on it? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. I've been kind of following along so far. Yeah, John and I have been on multiple calls over the past, I'd say, two or three years at this point. So um, I, I guess it's a matter of getting, you know, uh, have to get Kim up to speed on a lot of things that's going on, which, Dan, I'll probably rely on you, and maybe we can set up a call or something, and I can interject as well. So uh, I'm okay with if you would just, like to, to be involved. For my purposes, obviously, we have a, a continuing dialogue with our redevelopment agreement. Is this a committee just for the consulting party, or is it right. an overall committee for BL England, including RC Cape May Capital uh, and their issues? Um, so uh, if there's a motion, I'd like to understand whether this is a new committee just for your state issues, or is this a uh, committee that covers everything that deals well, with the BL? Well, <laughs> I, I I don't think at this point I'm willing to give up the conversations with RC Capital because they're really intricate at this point. And um, John and I have been on again multiple calls about that, and I'm not I, sure I, I, that I want to do that. So I I certainly think the Orsted conversation, the federal conversation, makes sense. I I agree with that. I think it's important to to keep you know the conversations with RC Capital and Rich has had a a good relationship there. Um, so I'm willing to support that in whatever way, but I would like to be part of the, the Orsted group. Okay, so do you want to frame a motion, Dan, so that you're comfortable that what yes. we're doing is... For, okay. for the permitting process through the Borough of Ocean Energy Management, the township will participate as a consulting party and the subcommittee, the township committee will be uh, Kim and John. For all of the only one issues, it will uh, remain as John and, and Rich. Okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Second. 
Would you call the okay, roll? Mr. Barr? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Orson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Okay. Nothing further at this time. Okay. Uh, Paul? Uh, thanks, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to update the committee on uh, you know the the work at Beasley Point Park is moving along uh, fairly well. Uh, we have run into a, a couple issues. They've um, so I would be requesting uh, uh, just to give the committee an update on some of the quantities, um, and that you know I'll be working with uh, Barb Ludi in preparing a contract amendment to address some of those contract quantities. Uh, there's a couple areas that we kind of had to overdig because we found some. Uh, old concrete slabs from the old parkway uh, bridge, not the recent bridge that was reconstructed, but we believe this was uh, concrete back from, uh, you know, probably back in the, from the seventies when they uh, built by that last section of uh, bridge. And then also um, when the, uh, our consultant that designed the project, uh, when they did the material takeoff and quantity listing for the uh, railing on the boardwalk area, they only did it for half of the, the railing um, so we were short on that so we're going to, have to add additional railing quantity into the contract so just wanted to give the committee an update that we're going to do a contract amendment uh, at an upcoming meeting to add those quantities into the contract one question paul sure where is this going to leave us in regard to the value of our change orders uh considering we were i guess we can go up to a 20 percent change order without a rebid if uh, I may object on that, Paul and I and Barbara Rudy reviewed this uh, Friday and today. Um, the change order, uh, it's not a change order when it's quantities and it fits within the parameters of the regulation when uh, all you're doing is changing quantity and you bid it as a quantity. In other words, if you bid a uh, dollar for each widget and you estimated 50, but you need 60, that's not a change order. As, but if you needed uh, 150, that would be a change order because you probably exceeded the maximum in bid specs. All right, so it was a unit price based bid. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and and we do have the funds available from the, the county grant to cover those costs. Okay, uh, that's all I had. Questions? Oh, I guess the only thing else I had was probably bef possibly before the next meeting, uh, there is a small gypsy moth uh, spray block that we have. and. Uh, Clerk's office has sent out all the required uh, individual notices to property owners, as well as the uh, public notice in the newspaper. And uh, we do have information on the township website regarding gypsy moth. Uh, but there was just a small area in Petersburg, uh, kind of along Jonathan Landing uh, and back towards uh, Amanda's Field. So that's the only spray block that we have uh, for this season uh, for gypsy moth. That's all I had this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Ludi. Evening. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Okay. Committee Man Coggins. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I had a couple of things this evening. Okay. First, I just wanted to uh, compliment Mr. Reeves and his team on the uh, appearance of Caldwell Park. Caldwell Park looks great this year. The, uh, <clears throat> the grass is green. The place is neat as a pin. Uh, Families are coming back using the park. It's good to see. So uh, job well done and please pass that on to your crews. Um, <clears throat> second, I wanted to talk about a safety hazard in the township regarding uh, the sight line at the intersection of Church Road and Route 9. As you're coming up to Route 9 on Church Road to the stop sign, as you look to the north, uh, there seems to be a lot of overgrowth of foliage that's really blocking that view. And at that point, uh, that section of Route 9 is fairly straight, and there is uh, a, a traffic coming along at a fairly good speed. So we ought to probably send somebody out there to check that sight line and make the appropriate corrections. Uh, John, we can take a look at that, but it'll probably be a notification either to the county or to the DOT, uh, or we may have to send a, uh, the zoning officer may have to send a a letter to the adjacent property owners, but um, because it's a county road and a state highway, they would have the jurisdiction to 
to do any physical work where we could, we'd have to notify the property owner to clear the site triangle. Understood. Thank you. <clears throat> John, if I can interrupt Mike Jones on Protassa Public Works. Yeah, Mike. Uh, we addressed this last year um, with the state, and the state was notified, and they were supposed to take care of this. Um, so we we have known about this. We have sent it. Uh, we have talked to the state on the phone. And, of course, when you call the state, you get a dispatcher, and they relay the message down the line. With with that information, uh, Paul and Dan, is there something that we can do internally with the property owner? Well, That's what I'll, I'll take a look at that. And, and and we do have ordinance requirements uh, from that, so I'll, I'll take a look at that with uh, Shelly and uh, get that process moving based on Mike's conversation. I would also suggest we do double check how we notified the state. If it was done by uh, a written, we should maybe a written in, in, uh, notification. We should do that again. Just and you see our legislators it seems to make a difference. <laughs> Dan, my conversation with them was done over the telephone to the state DOT line, which is at the uh, dispatch center. All right. Well, we should definitely at least do correspondence, but not a resolution. So. And one more thing I have on a on a very serious note, uh, as all of you are aware, I'm sure there have been many allegations regarding uh, failure at Ocean City High School to protect the students from bullying, harassment, assault, and, you know, really putting some of them in a position where they've been become in danger. The township of Upper represents probably the largest portion of the students in that high school, and we have very little in the way of representation. With that being said, and uh, Dan, if, if we need to do this in a in a form of a motion, I'll, I'll be certain to uh, to make it. I would like to see the township committee send a letter that will be delivered to the school board prior to their meeting on Wednesday the 7th, requesting that an independent investigator be brought in to uh, determine if some of these allegations have any merit to them. Uh, as you all remember, we had a committee member uh, who was touched by a tragedy related to uh, <clears throat> bullying at the high school. And uh, you know, it was very difficult to watch for all of us, and it was difficult for the family. So I think this is something that as uh, representatives of this township and our taxpayers and our children, we need to uh, act on. So I'll John, put that in the form of a motion, and I'll ask for all of your support. Just to clarify the motion, it's a letter to the Ocean City School Board, and I assume a copying the Upper Township School Board as well. Correct, and that letter should be delivered prior to uh, seven o'clock, seven p.m. on Wednesday, which is the uh, <clears throat> school board, Ocean City School Board's meeting. John, so who do you want the only want to other committee from? I think it should come from the mayor and township committee of Upper Township. John. So, so as the only committee John, member, John, do you know if any of these uh, complaints filed in that school? I would like to second that motion. I'm sorry. There was. A, I appreciate that, John. Can I ask you a question? question? What is it, Ed? Were Were any of these complaints formally filed with the school? Do we know of? They, it, according to the allegations, they have been formally followed with the school and not followed up on. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion in a second. Um, would you like to call the roll? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggin? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Thank you, and that's all I had this evening, Mayor. Okay. Committee Woman Hayes. 
I just have two very quick things. Um, there's been an ongoing issue with some of the tennis courts throughout the township. Uh, so Scott, Craig and I did a, a short tour of a couple of different sites uh, last week and we're working on a plan that looks like um, the tennis courts at Caldwell are probably going to have to be replaced, the, the older court, not the newer one. Um, and we're looking into if we can repatch some of those ones that are in the residential areas. So I just want the community to be aware that we're, we're aware of the problem and we're working on a solution. We don't have a final plan just yet, but we are working on it. Um, and then the only other thing I have is I had spoken with someone from the Upper Township Business Association, and they had just asked if I could convey that they are having um, their free shredding truck event this Saturday. The truck will be at Foglio's Flooring Center from 9 to 12. Um, the address there is 344 South Shore Road in Marmora. That's all I have this evening. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Barr. Um, I believe, Scott, don't we have a shredding truck also coming from Public Works? Uh, they're assisting with uh, traffic cones and barrels to facilitate the process through there, uh, but we're helping out in that same effort. Uh, so it's going to be the same, it's the same function, correct? That That's correct. Okay. All right, Mayor, I have nothing else. Okay, uh, committee men Corson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we just real quick, we had a few situations last week, I believe one day, um, where our rescue squad responded to uh, twice within 24 hours. And uh, it was uh, uh, it, a, a child that had some uh, psychological issues and uh, our rescue squad people instead they could have straight jacketed the girl and did what they had to do but instead they uh went above and beyond and spent some time and actually de-escalated the situation and did a wonderful job and uh the first incident was scott fancher and matt steinthal the second incident was uh melissa blackledge and, and john carter and i think they went above and beyond and, and did what they had to do to comfort the girl and that's uh just outstanding uh, on their part, and I just think they should be congratulated for doing a job well done. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, I have nothing this evening, so um, I'll ask Barbara to move on with the uh, resolutions, starting with uh, agenda number five. Number five, appointing the 2021 season beach patrol personnel. Motion to appoint. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motions carried. Item number six, appointing Jessica Riggins as a part-time employee to the Upper Township Division of Emergency Medical Services. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Seven, authorizing a contract with CASA Payroll Services of Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey for payroll services. Motion to authorize. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Eight, authorizing a contract with CASA Reporting Services of Egg Harbor Township for, for Affordable Care Act Reporting Services. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. 
Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Nine, authorizing the execution of a contract with Adams, Raymond, and Hagen for the maintenance of the official tax map. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Second. Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Item number 10, authorizing a contract with W. Michael Bailey for Public Safety Communication Services. Move the resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 11, authorizing the mayor and township clerk to sign a contract with Ancero LLC for professional information technology services. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. It's carried. Item number 12, tra tax refunds, homestead benefits. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Barr? Yes. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Palumbo? Yes. 13, revised 2021 temporary budget. Motion to approve. Second. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Orson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Item number 14, authorizing the purchase of certain items through the Sourcewell National Cooperative Contract with funds from the 2020 Capital Improvement Bond Ordinance in the amount of $100,003.72. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Person? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 15, accepting the annual stormwater report and certification and authorizing the township engineer to electronically sign and submit it to the NJDEP pursuant to stormwater rules. Approve the resolution. Second. Second. Bar? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Item number 16 under ordinances. Public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number 9, 2021, and ordinance authorizing the sale of lands to wit, block 414, lot 39.12. Mr. Barr? Okay, is there any comment before I open it up to the public? Okay, so at this time I'll open it up to the public. If anyone would like to address Ordinance 9 2021, um, now is the time to do so. Please state your name, your address, uh, and your reason for addressing the Township Committee. Everyone's unmuted, Mayor. 
Okay. Don't get me in the picture. Yes, this is David Cummings. I have a question. Sure. Can you David state Cummings, your address, please? David Cummings, 1808 Commonwealth Avenue, Strathmere. I was looking for a quick update on the status of the parking enforcement officer and oh. the towing contract. Dave, this is just for the it's a public hearing for ordinance uh, 9 2021. The public comment period will happen in the later point of the meeting. Okay. My uh, anyone else would like to address, um, or anyone would like to address the ordinance authorizing the sale of land? Danny, you're comfortable there's no public comment? Yes. Okay. So at this time, I'll, I'll uh, close the public hearing, let the record reflect there was no public comment, and entertain a motion for adoption. I'd like to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 009-2021, authorizing the sale of lands, block 414, lot 39.2. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Person? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried with all in favor. <clears throat> Item number 17 under unfinished business Anthony Jackson requests for a speed hump on Stagecoach Road in the vicinity of 1526 Stagecoach Road. <clears throat> I believe Mr. Dietrich has some information for us on that. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, at the request, you know, we, we typically have been doing this lately to uh, um, you know, really determine what the traffic looks like on a road uh, when we have requests. Uh, when I had the uh, traffic data collector out there uh, for about a week and a half, um, the, uh, the speeds were well within what we would say is within the regulatory uh, area. You know, the average speed uh, for a posted 35 mile an hour road, the average speed was 34.69. Um, the 85th percentile speed was 40 miles an hour, meaning that 85% of the cars were traveling less than uh, 40 miles an hour. And out of the 3,400 vehicles that you know passed through that area, um, there were 118 vehicles that exceeded 45 miles an hour. Um, the, the high speed was uh, about 52 miles, an, or I'm sorry, 54 miles an hour. So you know, there was some high speeds on that road. However, you know, when you look at the overall uh, analysis, it, they're well within what we would anticipate for a 35 mile an hour road and within tolerance. So it really doesn't warrant the uh, installation of any traffic calming measures. Well, I, I guess I would ask you, you, you stated what the one high number was. So how many vehicles were above 35 miles an hour? Or I'll even say how many vehicles were above 40 miles an hour? That, that 118, there was 118 above the 45 miles an hour. And, you know, I mean, most so of it, which, you know, may not, which may not be significant in your overall statistics, but 118 vehicles speeding could be of significance, you know, from from, you know, pedestrians and children that are in the area and everything else. So I, I, I don't I, I understand you're looking at it, um, you know, using, um, you know, data that we have re received that um, and, and using statistics to you know follow a, a normal course procedure but um i do have concerns if there's that many people speeding on that road but but it, it, it irregardless of what the statistics say or regardless with what the i guess regardless is the word um what the um you know statistics point out to us Paul, this is our road. This is our road, not the county's park portion, correct? Yeah, this is our section of uh, Stagecoach Road. Didn't we have uh, Paul? 
the, the, a service with Dennis Township where we're partnered with one of those uh, speed testers or uh, they don't they don't have that uh, anymore. Um, uh, I mean, we could look in. I could we could look into uh, with Public Works to install one of those uh, um, posting, you know, one of those permanent signs. The county has put several in. You know, they put a couple in. You know, on on our you know their county roads, but we could look at possibly putting one of those signs in uh, in that area that is a permanent solar mount sign that kind of says your speed is kind of a thing. That would be something that would just kind of alert the driver hey you're 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 going above the speed limit what is the cost of them i don't know off the top of my head i, I think they're probably i think they're under twenty five hundred dollars i think and what's the cost of putting in a speed hump which sign need you know that probably about the same yeah because probably because you know it's also a little more additional manpower but you know, from a material standpoint, you're probably it's probably pretty close to the same from from a dollar standpoint, but less less manpower to install. And really, to control speed on that section, you wouldn't just put one speed hump. Yeah, you know, you'd have to probably put in three in that stretch from Route Nine to the curve. You know, on that section, yeah, you know, you'd have to put in at least three to have any warranted type of an effect. Paul, the area that we're talking about, there's only housing on one side of the street also, correct? Uh, for about two thirds of it, yes. Yeah. Yes. And we had, how many cars did you say you surveyed? Uh, in the one direction there was, I believe 3,400. And you're saying somewhere about a hundred cars we had, uh, considerably went over the speed limit. That were more than 45 miles an hour over speed limit, yes. Well, not over speed limit, 45 right. miles an hour and the speed limit is 35. 45 miles an hour, yeah. <clears throat> so when you're, so with, with our other, the other times we've done traffic surveys, what you're saying is from the data that we collected, there isn't any need or warrant, warranted uh, solution that put in a uh, speed bump, correct? It, I, I don't think a speed hump's going to deter the you know, enforcement is where the uh, deterrence is would be, exactly. and that's you know you know to send this information over to state police so that they can you know help look at when, when some of the speeders are occurring, you know to, to look at trends and you know so they can set up a targeted enforcement. I would well, make that, that recommendation there because. In my in my experience, you find out that it's the neighbors are the ones that are speeding. So, if you send the state police out there and they stroke out a few tickets, uh, it's going to it's going to solve the problem. Well, I do I do think those um, radar signs or whatever they're called um, do draw attention to drivers uh, when it starts blinking and, and alerts you of your speed. I I think for the most part, um, drivers slow down. Um, and, and I wouldn't be opposed to doing that. I guess my, my, my question would be, they're only one, one, one side, right? So what side would you put it on? And, and is one on whatever side is determined enough to curtail the speeding on the, on that roadway? Should uh, when you look at the, going each way is what I'm asking. You most likely would want to put one in both directions. When you look at the data, you know, it was pretty evenly split, split, you know, the, the, the speeding and the frequency was pretty balanced in both directions on that section of road. So if you're going to do it, you, you would most likely would, would want to do it in both directions. Can, uh, can we forward this to the state police and then Paul, if you could get some uh, information on these signs and the cost of, for our next meeting so we get to talk about it some more? It's something That's I think I we need to look at. I'll report back at the next meeting for that what that cost us for sure. All right, but in the meantime, Scott, can you reach out um, to the state police for us and ask if we can have uh, that that roadway patrolled? Yes, Mayor, I did that after the last meeting. Uh, I talked to uh, 
uh, Lieutenant Rocap, um, and he had promised, and I know he's held good on his promise, uh, to have focused uh, and more targeted um, uh, speed interdiction on both Route 50 and on Stagecoach. So I have seen personally, uh, there has, has been a higher volume, and I think others have seen that too, because I know they brought it to my attention. Um, that uh, there has been increased activity on the part of the state police, but uh, I'll be—I'll actually be uh, talking to Lieutenant this week on another matter, um, so I'll certainly uh, emphasize that. And uh, for, uh, if Paul would like me to, I'll provide him with that information. That'd be great. Okay, I think it's important that they that they see the data that we have compiled. Um, also, Barbara, if you would, let's uh, continue this under unfinished business. Uh, so that Paul can give us a, a price quote for what those uh, radar signs uh, are going to cost if we consider it. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Um, would someone like to make a motion to pay the bills? John, you're on mute. I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of this meeting. Second. Mr. Bart? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. <clears throat> Person? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. There's one report of the municipal departments, an MUA report. Um, you can ask for a copy of this or request a copy of the clerk's office tomorrow if, if you'd like. But in the meantime, I'll make a motion to accept this report. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Gorson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Okay. At this time, we will open it up for public comment. Um, I would ask again uh, that you state your name, your address, and your reason for addressing the Township Committee. Um, Paul will unmute you and will recognize you as we go along. Um, I think Suzanne was the first caller that would like to speak to us, so let's call on her and followed by uh, David Cummings, and then we'll open it up to the rest of the folks. Hello? Yes, Suzanne, we can hear you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time tonight to listen. Um, so I have a neighbor. Uh, Suzanne, hold, it. Hold, hold it. You need to say your name and your address for the record. Yes, my name is Suzanne Adams. My address is 7 St. Andrew's Place. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So I know I also have a few neighbors on tonight as well. Um, we were reaching out in regards, because of our location being across from the primary and secondary school, um, we understand that our street connects across Route 9 to Randolph. We have accidents that happen so often there on route nine my mother-in-law lives next door on the corner which is one st andrews and um, these accidents are always occurring um, the speed that occurs up and down our street and we have become a young block over the years where our kids are outside playing uh, we did put up signs in the past two years, um, slow caution, kids at play, the generic signs we've purchased. It just doesn't seem to register for most. So it's becoming a high concern for us. Okay. Um, and, and there is a significant amount of traffic, obviously, in the morning and the afternoon uh, when, when children are going to school and, and parents are dropping children off and picking up their children. So um, it is pretty congested in that area. Paul, do you have any suggestions? I mean, um, I, we can put her on the list to do the traffic study. I mean, this is a little bit of a different area. You are 
in very close proximity to a school. Um, so not only do you do that, you have walkers in the area that are walking the school. Um, but I can definitely put her on the list um, to you know to gather some traffic data and report back to committee just to you know really see what the data says. But I think that you might want to treat this a little differently just because of the proximity to school. Suzanne, Could can I, I ask? Can I ask if the the traffic situation is is caused mainly by um, personal vehicles, meaning cars, you know, whatever, pickup trucks, whatever, versus the buses that may be going through there as well? I have to be honest, during school hours, we do not find it to be a challenge. Early in the morning or even after school hours, one thing that we do find is, um, I guess because Randolph is the accessibility as the background to the parkway, um, so many people tend to even come off of Roosevelt and take our side street to cut across Randolph to try to hit the parkway as quicker. And they are just very fast and moving. But again, the accidents are a prime, prime concern. Um, we had neighbors in accidents on that specific area just crossing over um it's just people are coming so quickly where the speed limit is 40 on route 9 um at our corner but they are doing like parkway speed limits 65 more Can we find I speak it more to this as well my name is um kate thompson i live on 14 saint andrews place um so i just wanted to support sue in saying that um people are driving so fast down route nine i have a toddler and we walk in our neighborhood often and um the speed is just insane we're having accidents fairly often at that corner um which also brings uh you know the state police who drive very fast to re report to the accidents so you know while i can understand they're reporting to an accident um there are children playing on our street all of the time. So that in itself is a safety concern. And I have lived here for six years and I would say that um, it only gets worse with summer traffic, people cutting through from Tuckahoe Road. I agree getting to the parkway, um, but I just wanted to support Sue in saying that it's, a, it's getting a little scary over here. Thank you. Hi, this is Jennifer Kilroy. I live on 16 Andrews Place. Hey. Hello. Um, I just wanted to also chime in here. Um, yeah, we definitely need a traffic study. And I'm looking more towards Route 9 and Tuckahoe Road as well. I'm not sure why the speed limit is like 40 to 45 miles an hour um, north of like Roosevelt Boulevard because we're all residential. We have the schools. Um, I guess in the last couple months, I want to say there's been at least two accidents on St. Andrews with the cross section being Route 9. Um, we have about 10 kids in our neighborhood. The buses also do fly down the street in the morning and in the afternoon. The concern is the speed limit, I think. Um, what else? I have a couple more notes here. I guess that's basically it. Yeah, and it's not just like a fender bender, these accidents. It's more like um, cars being totaled. Um, I think there was a an accident over the weekend where um, like a big suburban SUV was actually on the front lawn of our neighbor's like house. So it could have been like through the door. Um, and that actually has been occurring at least four to six times in the last few years. Okay, um, is there anyone else from that area that would like to address the Township Committee? Uh, okay, real so quick, this is Jennifer again. I think an issue is as well, um, when you're going south on Route 9 and you're trying to turn onto Roosevelt Boulevard, like make that left there, only one car can go at a time and that's why people are actually going through all the side streets and the residential neighborhoods because they don't have enough time to turn there so if that could be looked at as well 
Paul, they're they're going to make some improvements on that Roosevelt Boulevard road anyway, right? Yeah. So that is correct. And I think that because yeah. I mean, I I obviously live in Beasley's Point, and I make that that left hand turn there quite often myself. Um, I I think it's based on a camera and how many cars are actually lined up. I mean, they seem to sync it based on the amount of cars that are there. But um, yeah, the I, would timing agree is... it, I would agree it changes quickly. And then those cars that remain are, you know, kind of free to make a left-hand turn if there's no traffic coming north, you know, up to where Roosevelt Boulevard is. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I think that we can ask the county to look at that. Um, I'm not sure how much say the state has in that in that um, the lighting there because it does obviously you know affect Route 9. Um, and then maybe do a traffic study in the San Andrews area to see what kind of traffic and speeding is going on there. Yeah, that is actually a DOT controlled signal, and uh, they have uh, motors have at least uh, four to six car uh, lead time. Uh, for uh, the protected left-hand turn there. So they can get um, upwards of five cars out uh, uh, with a protected left turn there uh, before you have to kind of alternate with the uh, northbound traffic when it comes through there. But I'll take a look at that and, um, you know, we'll get that on the, them on the queue for doing a traffic analysis. Okay. Sounds like a plan, and then maybe we can report back in uh, maybe not the next meeting, but you know maybe the following meeting to see what you've come up with. Is that it, it, it may take a little bit longer than that, only because I have a couple of streets ahead of them that have been waiting. We had our traffic counter down for uh, six months, so I've got two other streets. Um, I may have to prioritize it a little bit just to make sure that we can get some data so while school's in session. All right, um, so, so it's fair to say that we can have some report for on this particular area by the first meeting in June. I I think that would be most definitely. I'll be able to have it by the first week in June. Yes. All right. So Barbara, can we pen that and we'll agendize that for the first meeting of June, please? Would it make sense for us to do a resolution now asking the DOT to look at that intersection ahead of the traffic study? Uh, they're actually, Kim, they're already looking at that intersection. They're, they're in a process of redesigning that. So they'll, they'll have already looked and analyzed with current, their own traffic data and analyzed and optimized that signal. Um, or they're already doing that. Okay. Is there a way for us to convey these concerns to them, the people that live in the area? I can report back to the project manager that's working on the project regarding that. Okay, thank you. And I'm right. sorry, Susan. Ann Adams here. May I add one more thing of concern? So coming okay. across, is that okay for me to speak or no? Yes, but this will be the last one because I got to have some assemblance and there's other folks that would like to speak as well. So go I ahead. understand and I apologize. So I'm lastly, sorry. also also on Randolph coming across Route 9 onto St. Andrews because we are separated as street through Route 9, um, the shrubbery, the stop sign is prior to this 8, 10-foot shrubbery, which when you stop at a stop sign, you stop prior to it. That's what we learned in driving school. And you really have to start to come out into onto Route 9 to see past this person's shrubbery. So that's something else I would like to have looked at or move the stop sign further up. Okay, so we can look Is that in. on our township street? That's on our if, township if, street? If, if Randolph is your township uh, street, I guess so. I don't really know township streets versus state. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, go, we could take care of that, right, Mike? Let's move the sign up because you can't see past this person. The sign is posted before this yeah, but you can't, uh, 10 foot shrubbery. You can't even see past it. We can't it. move the sign. The sign is posted by regulation uh, off of the edge of the road. So we'll have to look at the property owner to trim the site triangle. 
And we can take Mike a look Jones. at that tomorrow. Yes, right, thanks, I'm, Mike. Yes, I'll take a look at it tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you I'm Michael. sorry. Thank you. All right, okay. David Cummings, you're up. Uh, Dave, uh, I think Dave uh, Cummings said something he wanted to address the Township Committee, and then I'll open it up to the rest of the folks that would like to address the Township Committee. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I apologize for my uh, false start earlier. My question was generally just a, a status. Dave, and, uh, Dave, yeah, Dave. I'm sorry. You've got to state your name and your address for the record. Okay, David Cummings, 1808. Commonwealth Avenue, Strathmere. Thank you. My uh, question was just an update on where we are on the parking enforcement officer and the towing ordinance that had been discussed earlier uh, this year. Um, just we're getting close to the summer season and yeah, I think you all know that that's an important issue for the Strathmere population. So was looking for an update on where we are on that. Parking enforcement officers, we expect to have before Memorial Day an appointment of those individuals that will be serving as park, parking enforcement officers. The towing ordinance was adopted and bid specs were being prepared uh, to be sent out. Uh, and then when the bids come in, we can review them and it'll be up to the Township Committee to adopt uh, to uh, award a contract. Will, will there be some sort of communication to the residents around how to deal with some of these new um, approaches uh, if they have a concern about parking or how to get in contact with the appropriate official? Scott, do you want to answer that? Operationally, um, yes, obviously the most direct would be to uh, uh, consult with uh, any one of the, uh, uh, the individuals that's acting as one of our enforcement uh, officers there while they're on duty. Um, uh, secondly, we are developing a non-emergency number uh, with the Ocean City Police Department Communications Division so that if you do have any uh, direct questions regarding an enforcement problem, um, they can be directed that way uh, and then they would have communication directly with the enforcement, uh, parking enforcement individual. Okay, well, just... Just reinforce the the point that you know this is a new approach, and uh, I think a lot of the residents are very interested in this and how we communicate it to them in terms of how it works and who they should call. I think at one point, Scott, they had, that somebody had said call you, and I'm sure you don't want to get lots of calls over the weekend and things of that nature. So just okay. interested in communicating it to uh, the Strathmere population about how things should work and how they can get engaged in it if they have a, a call to make. Absolutely. We're, we've had three um, logistical or operational meetings uh, with uh, uh, the vice president of the KD, um, and they have a, a individual that's specifically assigned to the task of overseeing all of their tasks uh, regarding enforcement this summer. Um, and we will be meeting uh, before the end of this week uh, between uh, that K and D representative and our New Jersey State Police Lieutenant uh, uh, Roadcap, uh, so that they can finalize um, uh, any any other additional uh, concerns or um, operational uh, tact, uh, tactics that they uh, might seem uh, might deem necessary. Um, so uh, uh, I think we're you know. Uh, We've covered all the uh, things that we needed to cover, um, and as far as that educational information, uh, that will be uh, provided shortly, whether it be through our website, um, uh, but we will get that information out. Okay. Well, thanks for all your help on this. This is important to us. Okay. Um, would anyone else like to address the Township Committee? Yes, Mayor, I would. It's Linda Bateman, 14 East Tecumseh in Strathmere. And yes. First, I want to, want to thank you. I'm also the president of the Strathmere Improvement Association. I want to thank you for your stance uh, in sending the letter on the anti-bullying. Um, as, as you stated, we have so many of our students. I think we're the majority, I believe you said, in, in the high school. And that's really an important step in 
uh, shouldn't have to be said, but it's good to be on the record and to reinforce it. Um, my other comment is kind of along those same lines, but not exactly. Uh, you've probably seen the coverage of the investigation into the Ocean City Beach Patrol, uh, the accusations of sexual harassment, hazing, abuse, and the independent investigator has been appointed. And I'm just wondering, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I hope that our guards are counseled and um, given some sort of training and that there is a mechanism for anyone who feels threatened or harassed to be able to take advantage of some sort of protective system. Um, just wondering what we're doing to protect our upper township guards. Actually, all of the above is in place. Um, the, you know, Curtis has the responsibility of lifeguards uh, this coming summer, but um, I've had the responsibility of lifeguards uh, for the past 23 years. And, you know, that was an emphasis from the beginning. Um, there are, um, I think, a pretty good um, opportunity for, for the women that are on our squad, as well as the men. And um, we have emphasize um, appropriate behavior um, and we have an open door that any type of non-compliance, um, harassment or inappropriate um, actions are to be reported immediately and they will be um, addressed immediately. And who would they report it to? Um, they they we would have normally report it to the captain, but they have an open door to report it. Let me, let me clarify that, Mayor, if I may. Our policy says that they can report it to personnel because sometimes people are afraid to report to the supervisor for fear of it being in-house. So they have the right, and, and our policy specifically states they can report it to the supervisor if they, if they wish. If they would rather report it to personnel, they can report it to personnel. They can also report it to, to the township solicitor. The policy also requires an investigation and uh, uh, I can't divulge individual personnel issues, but I will tell you that, and Scott can verify this, for a number of years, uh, we have had a seminar uh, uh, class, whatever you want to call it, on all of these issues before any of the lifeguards put a foot on the beach. Wonderful. That's and, that, and that class is actually scheduled for this year for the first week of June. It's actually after we open the season. But there is a class on all the township policies to include, but not limited to, sexual harassment. And, and we do work with our outside um, risk management company. It's JA Montgomery. Um, they send a representative, and they've done this for the past three years, uh, three or four years, uh, and they cover all those same uh, issues that the mayor just uh, delineated. Great. Thank you. I'm um, glad to hear all that. And can I just clarify to you that policy is in place for all upper township employees, not just lifeguards, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. Uh, the, the it's all that essential and it's very specific. We have very specific anti-harassment. We have very, very specific policies right. for complaints and procedures to investigate complaints and resolve the complaints. Well, part yeah, of the and that also that conveys over to volunteers too, from a recreation standpoint. Right. Yes. I'm talking about young 16-year-olds, first job experience, and uh, not necessarily knowing how to go about doing it. So I'm glad to hear this. And it, according to some of the allegations in Ocean City, uh, that that the and I'm not saying this happened in Upper Township, but some of the allegations include um, the officers or whatever they're called, but the, the supervisors turning a blind eye. So I'm glad to hear that they they're empowered with other ways to to go about this. Um, I, I guess the other thing that's really heating up with the beginning of the season, and this came to uh, attention at the last planning board meeting, is the issues of um, the overcrowding and the fallout at the Deauville. And I don't know that it's something that the planning board alone uh, obviously will have to address as far as the site plan goes, but it would be, I, I think, um, a good thing for the neighbors and property owners who have been impacted by the recent growth and expansion who are, are really suffering if if something could be done. I, 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 over the weekend, wasn't even in town and I was getting multiple text messages and pictures of uh, cars parking three abreast on Willard Avenue. 
um, how no way a person could access their home or their street and no way would it, an emergency vehicle be able to make the turn onto Bayview. It just seems that the encroachment is increasing. And again, maybe this is something that the parking officers, parking enforcement people will be uh, made aware of, but it's, it's, it's out of control and it is the, that was opening weekend of the outside bar. Um, and we don't have the real estate expansion that places like Lavari's or Yesterday's or, or those other upper township businesses can, can spread out to. And where we're spreading out is onto people's properties. So just is something on the, it, it's a continuing issue here. And it's something that I wish the township would be uh, aware of and, and help, help us uh, as property owners protect our quality of life and our, our property. Thank you. Linda, we are aware of it. Um, it is in front of the planning board, as you know, right now, and it's been uh, part of the hearings done in the first site plan review. And I'm sure many of these subjects will be brought up, and I'm sure it'll be brought up again at their liquor license. But that being said, the enforcement um, officers we have are going to have staggered times, and some of them will include evenings in Strathmere. So. I do believe that there's illegal parking in the evening. They'll write the same ticket they will in the daytime. Well, this was broad daylight, but yes, on Saturday. Yes. But that will be part of their enforcement. Okay. And when I know Scott Morgan said something about the phone number, is that different from the non emergency numbers that we have now? Uh, they have not told us specifically which one they're going to be used. It could very well be the same. And that, uh, like I said, that information will go out uh, uh, probably within the next few weeks. Okay. Thank you. Um, would anyone else like to address the township committee? Everyone's unmuted, Paul. Yes. Yeah, everybody's been unmuted, Mayor. My name is. Oh, can Edward. you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Uh, uh, Go ahead. You're Jeff King. I can see you. You would like to speak? Thank you. Uh, I just appreciate uh, having Jeff. a moment of your time. Did you, did you Hold name? On. Yes, name oh. and address. Sure thing. <clears throat> Jeffrey Thomas King, 124 Elizabeth Parkway, Eatontown. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for your time. I just wanted to uh, speak to the issue of uh, cannabis access specifically for medical patients. It's uh, really hurtful to have a ban in place for a medical patient who is uh, unable to get around and uh, avail themselves of normal transportation. Uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, the AARP endorses medical cannabis. They had a whole issue about it. And uh, the American Legion, great uh, veterans organization representing veterans, is uh, fully in favor of medical cannabis, uh, trying to ask the um, VA to cover the medicine and not uh, give uh, them a uh, reason to commit suicide with uh, harmful, terrible, uh, addictive opiates. So I just, I mean, it hurts me because I, people I love are, are in those categories. Um, but I just, I know you, you made up your mind for the best interest to protect the community, but I just want you to keep in mind that uh, there's people in your community that are really marginalized that also need your protection. And maybe you could think about a way in the future to, uh, Maybe, uh, I, I don't know, just. Uh... Well, Jeff, let me, let me just clarify one thing. One, we have not passed an ordinance at this point. It has been moved to the planning board for further discussion. There's a special meeting on the planning board on May the 5th. Um, and it isn't necessarily to address medical marijuana. It's actually to address recreational marijuana. So, um, I just thought that you should should be aware that what we're looking potentially to do is to ban the sales of recreational marijuana 
um, based on the, the recent legislative initiative that passed and is now moving forward. Okay. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Uh, yeah, as, as long as you're taking into account the people that are really in need of your help and uh, trying to help them, I think that uh, that's a win for everyone. I, I know it's 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 a different thing now. It's not it's not uh, everyone smoking. Some people are taking it uh, through uh, orally and uh, different administrations. So it, it behooves us to to a little keep our minds open and think about the the benefits. So I appreciate your your consideration. Just uh, take your time. Make a good. Uh, Make a good good discussion of it, open and, and honest and transparent, and, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Jeff, I have a I have a family member that's on uses medical marijuana, and I don't think anybody on the township committee or, or it was opposed to the medical marijuana, um, and at all. So that's just my thank thought. you very much. Uh, would anyone else like to address the township committee? Uh, yes. Yep. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Hughes first. He, he was. Go ahead, you. Yes. Uh, Hugh Giordano, 57 Argyle Ave, Blackwood, New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> Mayor and Council, I'm coming today as a union representative uh, for the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, UFCW, Local 152. We are the official cannabis labor union uh, in North America, we represent both medical and adult use cannabis workers. Uh, from seed to sale. Um, we have a membership of 1.3 million hard work working families. Um, and it's a growing industry and it's becoming a large part of our membership. Um, we've organized a couple thousand uh, new members just within uh, pandemic because of the conditions. Um, so just wanted to just briefly say I heard your comments that, that the planning board as far as figuring out where you would want to place these things if, if, if there's space available. Um, I wanted to suggest one that you look at the Bayonne, City of Bayonne Ordinance, uh, which they, they passed about three weeks ago. Um, it lays out the structure of how you would welcome uh, an adult use and or medical, depending on what you decide to have in uh, Upper Township. Um, it lays out the permit costs, but it also lays out um, on, I believe, page 10 of the ordinance, 10, 11, 12, um, a merit-based system of how they would be able to apply, meaning do they have labor standards that go are consistent with Upper Township, meaning good wages, benefits, sick time, vacation time, environmental standards, as far as how they'll treat the community, as far as the water, um, the waterways and uh, everything that, that matters within the community as far as recycling and so forth as well. Um, I think it's a good ordinance. I think it lays out a path and I think it will attract good employers. Um, cannabis creates really good jobs. And in New Jersey, we have the best labor standards in the country as far as labor law, um, as far as protecting cannabis workers, because the federal laws have been very, uh, sad to say, slow in doing so. Um, so the states are taking that action. Um, and they have the right to unionize, which means that they're gonna have good wages, health care, vacation time, paternity leave, which is important for the working class community, especially since your population has been growing since 1930. Um, so with a higher population, you need good jobs. Uh, these workers are also trained with four year degrees, horticulture. Um, you, cotton, you, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to cut you off a little bit. We're, we're, we're not even to the point of you know, making that decision. I mean, the committee um, will weigh the options and, and determine what they'd like to have in the township whether or not they'll support that opportunity. But, you know, I, I think you're starting to get into more of a discussion on, you know, jobs and opportunities and those kind of things. And I don't know that, that the Township Committee is, is ready to to take that on at this point. So um, I'm gonna okay. ask. I, I appreciate that. And um, I would like to offer you a tour of the Garden State Dispensary. It's one of the unionized dispensaries. It's the first one of the six in the state. So I can offer you also a tour from sales so you could see the type of jobs that are created. Okay, thank you. Um, who else would like to address the township committee? Yes, I would. Go ahead. Yes, Marianne. my name is 
My name is Marina Redman, and I'd love to discuss how much medical marijuana has helped me. Um, you did not, what's your address, please? I apologize, I get nervous. Um, Three Burrell Square, Parlin, New Jersey. It helps me with PTSD. When I was younger, I was in a hospital, big New York City hospital. I was born with a birth defect on my leg. Um, you know, back then your parents weren't allowed to stay over. So between the ages of one and four and a half, I was told to be a big girl, don't cry, it's okay, you'll be fine. When I was going into surgery, now these days you could bring your kid into surgery. Or, or if you're the kid, you could actually have your mother or father there, a guardian there to make you feel better. I didn't have that. This is one of the reasons why I have such bad PTSD. Um, and unfortunately, in 2017, I'm doing good now, but I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. In three weeks, I lost 50 pounds. I couldn't take the medicine that they were prescribing me. It didn't work. It was horrible. Um, it took me four weeks to get my medical marijuana card. Um, you know, people say, take an Uber, take a Lyft. We, if you're on permanent disability, if you're going through cancer treatments, it's far away. And then sometimes they say, well, go get it delivered. That's also an, that's also more money for us, the physically disabled people who, who are, you know, who have the appearance of cancer in their body or, or who have any other medical challenge. It's just, it's just horrific. Um, you have, you have um, about 60 psychiatrists in the state of New Jersey who are helping people with PTSD and other um, side effects prescribe medical marijuana 60 doctors then you have nine pedi nine pediatric doctors in the state of new jersey maybe more who help pediatric patients with seizures cancer and everything else you have family practices neurologists oncologists so many different type of oncology doctors who are helping patients so i'm an open book if you'd like to ask me any questions on my journey with medical cannabis you may I have a question. Yes. Would, would, would a cannabis shop in, in Upper Township, New Jersey, improve your quality of life? Absolutely. It would. It would because, unfortunately, you, there's so many. You. I know. I said your quality of life. Yes, because I may go down there for vacation. I may move down there. And you know, in in the state of New Jersey, you have um, 280 Walgreens almost 400 CVSs, and we hardly have any med medical shops. I'm just asking for medical cannabis. You know, people say, oh, it's delivery, it's this, you know, take an Uber, take a Lyft, that also costs money. It's very heartbreaking when people say, take an Uber, take a Lyft, you know, then you have access link. I don't know if you have that in your area, but the, but the people call it access thing because it's horrible. And if you have an Uber Lyft, if you have a service dog, they're not gonna want, some of them don't even want that dog in their car. And unfortunately, I mean, you probably do have people who do need this in your town. And it is such a wonderful thing to have. All right, well, thank you for your comments. Um, you know, we, we, we we will be addressing the ordinance at a later date, and that's probably when we're going to also be entertaining, um, you know, discussion on it. So, thank you. Thank you for keeping an open mind on medical cannabis. Anyone else? My name is Edward Lefty Grimes. I'm with SativaCross.org. We're 501c3 here in New Jersey, advocating for disabled rights and for cannabis patients' rights. And I would just like you to try to consider what it would be like to live in a wheelchair. Did you get an address? Yeah, I'm at 84 Hanover Road, East Hanover. And a lot of patients are in wheelchairs. And they're very sick. They have cancer. They have MS. They're, they're suffering. And you have to imagine what it's like to be in a wheelchair and to try to get out and, out and do something. First of all, you have to have an Uber and that will take your wheelchair. And a lot of times these are electric wheelchairs. That's a whole different category. So we need your help. We're getting hit from all sides here as patients. Uh, our group is a bunch of sick people advocating for our rights. And you wouldn't take someone's medicine away to their face 
But a lot of these towns are doing it by proxy. They're doing it not to their face because when you see someone suffering to their face, you want to do, you want to help them. A good Christian would want to help somebody who's suffering, especially when they see it up close. A lot of people, once they see it up close, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee someone in a wheelchair suffering, and then you want to do something about it to to, to help to change that stigma. So if you're in a wheelchair, I tell these councils, every council I go to, to spend the day in a wheelchair. Not one council has taken me up on that. Spend a day in a wheelchair. I'll do it with you. And you'll see how hard it is to get around. How far do you expect someone to wheel themselves to a dispensary in a wheelchair? And I mean, people in wheelchairs want to browse. They want to enjoy life. They want to be part of everything. But there's steps everywhere. Now. I don't usually ask for this, but I'm going to ask you to, to take that wheelchair tax. There's a tax on cancer, it's a tax on MMS, but if you're going to take that tax, give us representation for that taxation, give us wheelchair access. A lot of these towns that are banning cannabis, a lot of these towns that are actually taking that wheelchair tax have no wheelchair access, and we want wheelchair access. If you're going to tax us in wheelchairs, we want representation for that, and we need help. The medicine we're buying at the dispensaries is moldy. The medicine we're buying is overpriced. Now with recreational cannabis, the people in wheelchairs are pushed back in line. When they get to the front of the line, the strains that they need are gone. The amounts that they need are gone. They need help. That's all I'm asking okay, for. Help. Thank you. I, thank you, Lefty, for your comments. Um, anyone else like to address the Township Committee? Paul, I see you're muted. Are, do you have, are we unmuted for people to address the Township Committee? Yeah, everybody's unmuted, Mayor. Okay. Um, again, I'll, I'll, I'll ask, is there anyone else that would like to address the Township Committee? Now's the time to do so. Uh, Dan, it doesn't appear to be any other uh, further public comment. Are you comfortable if I close the public comment? Yes. Okay. So at this time, um, we will close the public comment portion of the meeting and entertain a motion to go into executive session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. <clears throat> the matters are contract negotiation for appraisal services, health benefits, litigation of our township versus painter and personnel. I also include my motion, the estimated time and the circumstances under which this, the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the township committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. With respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Um, so Mayor. I thank you all for attending this evening. You're welcome to stay on um, this particular um, Zoom call. The Township Committee may or may not address any items in open session. We will come back in open session after executive session to either adjourn or take care of any you know, additional business. So you're certainly welcome to stay on this line um, and the committee will be done when executive uh, session agenda items have been completed. So thank you again. For those that are leaving, um, have a great evening. And um, I do appreciate the public comment uh, and the ability to uh, voice your opinion. So have a great night, everyone, and a great week. You too.
seen. Let us know, so let you be seen. So that's great that we can be seen and heard. Uh, we go to council meetings all over the state, and sometimes you can be seen. Sometimes you have to ask to be seen. And sometimes you can ask, and they won't, they'll say no. We don't do that here. But other towns can do it. <laughs> other towns could do it. So, yeah, you just don't want to do it. You just don't, you choose not to do it. You choose to default on the side of not freedom, unfreedom, freedomless. I'd rather err on the side of freedom. Like, give, give us all the controls, give us all the chats, give us everything, give us everything. And if we abuse it, well, then, yeah, we, we face sanctions. We face getting kicked out of them, just like you would go to a regular council meeting. And if you acted up and you, you would get kicked out. Well, we have to have that right. I mean, I don't, I don't understand why would they would disable a chat. That you know, like we can't chat amongst. Our... <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, I can't sit in this chair. Oh, I'm still alive on Facebook. Oh, this is great. Oh, see, Facebook. See, this is what we do when they leave executive session. Now, yeah. now we just hang out in the meeting, <laughs> and we talk, and they record us. They're recording us. So I, I hope they listen to this later. <laughs> So the, the uh, ordinance is in the planning board stages right now. Yeah, she's cool. I guess they're deciding where to put a medical dispensary. Where would you put a medical dispensary in, in this town? That's what you need to think about. You can't get weed in. You do, do, do. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Going back. That was a quick one. Hello. <laughs> that was quick. What do you say, going back? Going back, is that what you say? Yeah, what? What? <laughs> I love these. This is fun. I don't know why I like this so much. I just feel like the teacher left the classroom. And now we're in the classroom by ourselves, and we're like, you know, <laughs> I feel like I'm in school again. <laughs> why do I feel like I'm in school again? And the teachers just left the room. <laughs> it's funny and that's why they're recording they're like hey let's record these guys and see what they talk about these guys go to all the council meetings let's see what they talk about when we leave the room yeah well we talk about other councils we talk about wayne where they uh where they violate your rights in wayne far hills where they don't care there's no compassion to far hills ocean city did i hear ocean city mentioned tonight oh my muted me why was i being what did i say i didn't say nothing bad why'd you mute me hey <laughs> we're just in the empty hall of the public meeting talking amongst ourselves we can talk amongst ourselves can't we I was talking about Ocean City. I guess nobody wants to talk about Ocean City. <laughs> I guess Ocean City is a trigger word for a lot of people lately. It was a trigger word for me. When that mayor said arrest them and let the courts figure it out, and the chief says, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do that unconstitutional stuff in this town. No matter how ignorant that council and mayor is, we don't do that here. <laughs> Jeff, are you still on? I can't. All right, hold on. I'm going to open up to everyone here. There's like I'm on. People. I'm on here. There's 12 people on here still. Uh, it's, I don't even see any. Oh, here's. Hold on. Here come the Northern Tool Bags.
I'll mute my. I'll mute myself. Turn your volume down. These meetings, because this is funny. This, this is why I come to these meetings. Finally. This is why I go to these meetings. For the Nothing got done during executive executive session.
Hello? Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? I'm afraid to speak. Jeff, I hear you, but I'm afraid to speak. If I speak, I'll get. No, I wasn't allowed to speak here. Are we allowed to speak here or not? I, I, I'm just trying to. I'm trying We're disruptive.
Yeah, I'm here. What did I miss? What happened?
muted. Rich, you're muted. Do we need Paul? I think he's on. Yes. Is it the organizer? Paul, you're there, right? He's aware that we're back. Yeah, I know. I texted him. He said, okay. So we are being recorded, right? Yeah, it is being recorded. I guess we're okay. Yep. All right. So I'd would like someone to like to make a motion to come out of executive session into open session? I'd like to make a motion we adjourn from uh, closed session and resume the public portion of the meeting. Second. All right. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll. What about Barnes? us? What about the community? Well, there's no more public comment. So we waited. I hit it down. I made the announcement before Wait we went into closed session that we may be. We may or may not so, go into open session media, for additional business. We don't blocked. have anything else to do. There's two media outlets watching you right now, and we're both being blocked. Okay. You're not being There's blocked. No additional public the, the law requires that it be open to the public. The general meeting was open to the public. We took a break to go into closed session to discuss confidential matters. It was announced before that that we would come back to close the. We weren't uh, here at that point, sir. Let me finish, please, sir. It was announced before the uh, break to go into closed session that we would come back. If we had business from closed session we would, that needed to be done in public, we would do it. But otherwise, we would close the meeting. That's what's occurring now. The public session and the public portion already occurred. You're welcome to come to our next meeting if you want. We'll be there with all of our friends. Have a good night. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Ace? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Everybody have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Take care. Take care. Right. Scumbags.